Good evening and welcome to this digitally enabled online meeting of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth held on Monday, May 17th, 2021. I'm Mayor Todd Kasenberg and I'll call this meeting to order. I ask the Deputy Clerk to note our starting time for the minutes is 7 p.m. Tonight's meeting is being streamed live on the Municipality of North Perth YouTube channel and will be available there after the meeting as an archived video. Anyone who is invited to speak will be recorded and their voice, image and comments will form part of the live stream. The chair and or the clerk have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances where deemed relevant. Circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading, defamatory, or potentially inappropriate to be published. Thank you. Welcome to those joining us via the YouTube channel tonight. Welcome and, and beyond even. Welcome to councillors, staff, and delegations who will participate in this meeting. We have a, a fairly rich agenda tonight and uh, looking forward to uh, several of the uh, presentations that we have. At this time, I'll invite your decorum through the course of the meeting. I advise that I do have attendance regrets tonight from Councillor Duncan. Let's move to item 2.1 on our agenda per pertaining to pecuniary interest. For the benefit of those unfamiliar with our council practices, provincial legislation requires councillors with a potential pecuniary or financial interest in any item at the council table to declare this interest and to remove her or himself from discussions and voting on the item. In accordance with recommended protocol at this time, I invite all councillors with perceived pecuniary interest, including those who have declared in writing in advance, to verbally advise the chair in public session and to submit documentation to this effect in writing to the clerk. Councillors are further reminded that should a potential conflict arise during the meeting, they may say, so declare and act at any point in the meeting. Tonight, we begin with Councillor Andreessen. Councillor Andreessen, welcome. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Through you, I'll need to declare uh, uh, potential pecuniary interest on item 5.2.1. It's regarding the request for approval for the fireworks display at the fairgrounds. And this is due to um, my involvement as a director with the Listowel Agricultural Society. And um, consequently, that would mean that um, I'll need to uh, refrain from voting at the conf confirmatory bylaw, which is 13.1. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Andreessen. Next up is Councillor Anstead. Welcome. Thanks, Mayor Kaysenberg. This evening, uh, through you, I'd like to declare a pecuniary interest on item 5.5.1, the accounts, specifically the daycare, as my son attends the St. Mary's daycare, and also on item 13.1, the confirmatory bylaw. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Anstett. Next up is Councillor Behrens. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Through you, I would like to declare a conflict on 5.5.1 and as well 13.1, the account specifically daycare, as I have grandchildren attending two of our amazing North Perth daycares as well as after school programming. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Behrens. Uh, are any other councillors in a position uh, wherein they wish to declare a potential conflict at this point? We're not seeing any. Um, at this point, we're, we're noting the absence of Deputy Mayor Kellum. Um, and I know often he has a declaration to make around these matters, but when he joins the meeting, should he join the meeting, then we will uh, address at that time. To explain our virtual processes, I will be systematically trying to seek consent from various councillors as movers and seconders, the various resolutions and bylaws that will be put before us tonight. I will do this to some degree alphabetically. Should a councillor not wish to respond to the request, they may say so and I will move to the next name on the alphabetical list. Uh, regarding speaking to our business, councillors tonight will identify themselves through our conferencing technologies chat function. The clerk is assisting me tonight in maintaining the speaking order from that source. Councillors are allowed on their turn 
to deliver a primary question or comment and may make one supplemental without intervention from me. We will follow speaking order carefully and any councillor wishing to have a second say will have to indicate again and go to the bottom of the list. This is a normal process consistent with Robert's rules of order. Councillors are reminded that if I believe you are not audible, I'll let you know. I would like to hear your voice. Councillors are further asked to maintain a mute state in the web conference until I have called upon you for a verbal reaction. Should any of your votes not show up in eScribe, our voting technology, I will call on you when things seem stalled to register a manual vote. At that time, take yourself off mute, answer yes or no on the mute motion, and then return to mute. That brings us to item 2.2 of our agenda. I have a motion before me for the adoption of the agenda for tonight's meeting that reads as follows, that the agenda for tonight's meeting be approved. Can I call on Councillor Rothwell to be our mover tonight? Yes, well. Also moved, yes. Thank you, and Councillor Seiler, will you serve as our seconder? I will second that, thank you. Thank you, any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried, I believe. Yes, that is carried. Thank you. Uh, next up, then. Uh, oh, uh, we, I see that Deputy Mayor Kellum has uh, joined us now. Um, Doug, do you have a declaration to make with regards to uh, potential pecuniary interest? Deputy Mayor Kellum, can you hear my voice? Okay, well, perhaps he's not here then. Uh, I thought I saw his name in the voting list. Uh, that brings us to item three on our agenda, the so-called consent agenda. These items are placed on our agenda because they're believed to be non-contentious, yet they do warrant council's recognition and or action. Grouping, exp grouping them expedites our business. However, any council wishing to extract an item from the consent agenda for discussion, debate, and or individual action may do so. There are five items on our consent agenda tonight, including the minutes of our last regular council meeting. Councillors, do any of you have any concerns or any items you'd wish to extract? Felt anything? Okay, so we're not seeing any indication at this point. Therefore, let's turn to the proposed resolution that consent items 3.1 to 3.5 be received for information and the minutes of the May 10th, 2021 regular council meeting be adopted. Can I call on Councillor Andreessen to be our mover for that one? Yes, Mayor Kaysenberg, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Anstep, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I would second that motion. Thank you. Thanks. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. We think that's carried because we believe we have eight in attendance at this point. So we're going to call that carried. We're just negotiating here in the council chamber, clerk and I. I hope you don't see us arm wrestling. That would be unfortunate. Um, I have a motion, uh, therefore, uh, oh, sorry. No, I don't have any more motions at this point. We're moving on to agenda item number four. Uh, our agenda tonight includes a public meeting to consider improvements to the Holman Municipal Drain which is located from uh, my notes in the Elma ward. To do that, we need to adjourn temporarily from our meeting. I have a resolution that will enable that action that reads as follows. If the Council of the Municipality of North Perth adjourns at 7.10 p.m. for the purpose of a public meeting under the Drainage Act to consider the Holman Municipal Drain 2021 report prepared by R.J. Burnside and Associates Limited. Uh, can I call on Councillor Behrens to be our mover for this one? Yes, I will move that motion. Thank you. And Councillor Johnston, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I would second that. Okay. 
Thank you. Any discussion or debate on this matter, which will take us out of the uh, regular session and into a public meeting? We're not seeing any, so let's have that vote. I'm in favor. My vote did not pop up. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Estet. Councillor Rothwell, we're not seeing your vote. What say you? Councillor Rothwell, can you hear me? Yes, uh, I can. I'm in favor. Thank you. So that, with that vote, that's carried. And uh, that means that we are temporarily adjourned from our regular council meeting for the purposes of a public meeting. Uh, this is a public meeting for the purposes of reviewing a drainage report. Um, normally, I would welcome assessed landowners. I'm given to understand from the clerk that none had registered prior to this meeting. So to our knowledge, there are none with us. Uh, they would need the coordinates and... Uh, you come ahead of time and you go get them. Um, but at this time, uh, we would like to hear the report from the engineer. And uh, we have with us Trevor Kipfer, uh, who is a project engineer with RJ Burnside and Associates, uh, who will present this report. Welcome, Mr. Kipfer. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, I'm just going to give a brief summary of this project. Um, so the Holman Municipal Drain is located just to the southwest of Newry, Ontario, near the intersection of Road 166 and Line 71. Uh, and it serves as an outlet for approximately 245 acres of land. Uh, initially, this report, our primary focus was to complete a drain realignment. But later on in the project, the scope had expanded to include the improvement of the entire tile portion of the drain. Initially, the on-site meeting for this project was held in June 2017. A follow-up information meeting was held in September of 2017. We ran into a couple uh, snags with the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, which put the project on hold until later in 2020, where the scope was finalized. So following, following those meetings and, and discussions with stakeholders, we have the final proposed improvement to the Holman Municipal Drain as follows. So we're proposing the enclosure of 550 meters of channel, the construction of approximately 200 meters of channel and grass buffer strip. We're proposing approximately 600 meters of channel improvement, including the deepening through the concrete structure on line 71 and the replacement of one existing farm crossing. Uh, there is approximately 2000 meters of closed drain work with tile sizes ranging from 200 millimeters or eight inch tile to 900 millimeters or 36 inch tile. Uh, we're also proposing the installation of five concrete structures. The total cost estimate for the project, we've estimated construction costs at approximately $325,000. We've estimated property owner allowances at approximately $56,000. Engineering fees at approximately $110,000. Um, other costs uh, such as permitting, net HST interest, and so on. We've estimated at approximately fifty-four thousand uh, dollars for a total estimated cost of five hundred and forty-five thousand dollars. As far as how those costs are distributed, we've assessed approximately five hundred and fifteen thousand to private lands and thirty thousand to municipal lands. We're expecting approximately $115,000 in OMAFRA grant to come off of those private lands assessments. Um, and just one thing worth noting is that that's actually less than what we typically expect on a drain project um, because we are doing a partial enclosure. So we're not anticipating that all costs will be grantable. And the last thing I have to note here is that we were hoping, we haven't completed it yet, but we're hoping to apply for the Huron Clean Water Project grant for this project, um, which would normally amount to approximately $5,000. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Kipper. It's a big one. All right. Um, uh, again, we, we do put out the call, even though we don't believe anyone has joined us for this purpose, but we put out the public call uh, for questions from assessed landowners. 
at this time. Just making sure we're following the process. Okay, next, uh, questions from council. Uh, councilors, do you have questions about this matter? Uh, please use the web chat feature to queue up if you would. Are we seeing anything? Okay, we're not seeing any uh, questions or indication of interesting questions uh, from council. Um, so at this point, uh, we have uh, no indication of anyone withdrawing. We haven't had significant concerns raised, and that means that we can bring this public meeting to adjournment. Um, uh, very quick, very quick indeed. Okay, so um, I have a resolution for that purpose then uh, that reads as follows, that the public meeting is now adjourned at 7.16 p.m. and the council reconvened into regular uh, open council. Can I call on Councillor Richardson to be our mover for that one? I will move that, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rothwell, will you serve as our seconder for that one? Yes, I'll second the motion. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on this from council? Any last questions? Okay. Seeing none, let's have that vote. I'm in favor, my vote didn't come up, Councillor Rothwell. Thank you, Councillor Rothwell, and with that, uh, we'll call that carried. Mr. Kipfer, thank you for joining us tonight. It was a very straightforward pleasure. Thank you very much. Have a nice night. Thank you. All right, uh, Council will move on uh, next to, um, so that means, bang the gavel here, uh, that we are back in session. And um, at this point, we're going to turn 4.2. This is an opportunity to receive information about and consider the adoption of the Community Safety and Wellbeing Plan. Operation of such a plan as a statutory duty was undertaken in collaboration with other Perth County municipalities. Uh, how I'd like to play this out is I'm going to call on my friend Kim McElroy from the City of Stratford to helm the presentation. And Kim, I'll leave it completely in your hands to call in any colleagues that you wish uh, to help with your presentation tonight. I won't intervene at all until we get to the end of your presentation. So welcome to Kim McElroy. Kim, you're on mute, we're not hearing you. Kim, we're not hearing you. I can take it, Mayor, if uh, you can't hear Kim. There. Can you hear me now? There, we can hear Kim. Sorry. And you, you, you had a, a volunteer <laughs> jumping right in there, so. Yeah, so that's okay. I'm going, to, I'm going to just quickly introduce who I brought with me, and Chief Skinner is going to take the lead on the presentation. So with me tonight, through, uh, through Mayor Kassenberg, is Chief uh, Greg Skinner from Stratford Police, and Inspector Dave Cinco from the OPP, as well as Tracy Farmer from DPRA and Janine Fast. And I'll pass it on to Chief Skinner for the introductions and the uh, presentation. Thank you, Kim. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. And thank you for giving us some time on your agenda today to present to you the final version of the Community Safety and Wellbeing Plan for the Perth County Partnership Municipalities and Councils. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Greg Skinner, the Chief of Police of the Stratford Police Service, and joining me for this presentation are Kim McElroy, Director of Social Services for Stratford, Perth County and St. Mary's, Acting Inspector Dave Cinco, Detachment Commander for Perth County OPP, Tracy Farmer, the lead consultant on this project from DPRA Consultants, and Janine Fast, Housing Stability Policy and Program Coordinator with Social Services. I hope that you've had some time to review the documents that we provided in uh, advance, but if not, I hope that our overview today provides you with the information you need to adopt this plan for your municipality. We may be having trouble with the slideshow.
Maybe I'll just continue. We may not have a slideshow uh, helping us along here. Here we go. So the intention of today's presentation is to pr briefly provide you with a broad overview of the why and how of the legislative requirement for each municipality to have a community safety and well-being plan and the extensive public and stakeholder consultations that inform the consultants to identify the priority areas, determine the goals and objectives at a high level, and then look at our next steps as we implement the plan. Items four and five on the slide is where we will be focusing today. And now to talk about the background, I'll turn it over to Inspector Senko. Good evening, everyone. So each municipality is required through legislation to have a community safety and well-being plan approved and adopted by July 1st, 2021. I have been impressed with the cooperation at the municipal government level as all six municipalities in Perth County partnered to commit to one plan. That is no easy task at the best of times, but Tracy and her team at DPRA were able to very professionally navigate the challenges presented by a global pandemic to produce a document that recognizes the similarities and, to, and the differences among the communities represented by the partner municipalities and build in the flexibility in the plan that can meet the diversity of needs across the county. The purpose of the Community Safety and Wellbeing Plan is not to recreate the wheel. Each of your municipalities individually and collectively have incredible people performing amazing work to support their communities. The purpose of the plan is to be the overarching plan that coordinates those activities happening now, leverages existing resources, shares best practices, and identifies and addresses any gaps in service delivery. We live in a fast-paced world where issues come, to, come at us from all directions, and it is easy to get pulled into the weeds and get stuck in paralysis by analysis. The intent of the plan is to provide a strategic, coordinated effort where complex community issues are addressed holistically, ensuring that resources are provided effectively, efficiently, and consistently with the community knowing what resources are available, how to access them, and what services they can expect to be provided. So the planning framework, and this graphic demonstrates the four levels of intervention to community issues. Incident response is expensive, and that is where resources like police, fire, ambulance, social services, hospitals, ERs, et cetera, are required to deal with people in potentially crisis situations. This plan focuses primarily on the other three levels in order to reduce the calls for service and reduce the risk to our communities. The more initiatives we can implement that are focused on social development, prevention, and risk intervention, the greater impact we can have on our communities. Some examples of programs that have had a very positive impact include the Mobile Crisis Rapid Response Team model. We're taking the services to the street and to the people who need them but struggle to access them are served better and result in less in the way of expensive incident response. And now I'll turn it over to Kim to discuss how we created the roadmap. Okay, so I'm starting with slide eight. The stakeholders listed above provided DPRA with their advice, guidance, and local experience in developing the research and survey tours tools to ensure the right organizations and individuals were contacted to contribute to this plan. The advisory committee meetings provided the opportunity for leadership positions who have the ability to make decisions and are authorized to allocate resources, including funding from existing budgets, to come together for a common purpose. It is this structure at the senior leadership level that will model the participation of the action groups to inform the executive leadership team. Slide nine, the plan shows the plan's guiding principles and the following are the set of principles, respect, equity, collaboration, inclusion, commitment, and compassion. As you can appreciate, there's a lot of existing information that needed to be reviewed to ensure that the goals and objectives of the community safety and well-being plan allied with 
the existing strategic plans of your municipality and supported the goals that you would want to achieve as a council. All of the information obtained from that research and consultations were built into this plan. Slide 11 speaks to stakeholder engagement. Stakeholder engagement is the key to this plan being successfully accepted by our communities to address the diverse needs of each of our municipalities. The next few slides provide an overview of the efforts that were used to reach out to the community and provide them an opportunity to participate so they could have their input into the priorities, objectives, and goals of the plan. A comprehensive online survey was conducted with significant efforts being made to get the public to, compl to complete the surveys. In the end, an impressive 1,078 surveys were completed with the proportion by municipality that is outlined above. In addition to the surveys, a number of facilitated discussions and one-on-one -on -one interviews were held. A total of 91 people participated in those sessions. The last component of the stakeholder engagement sessions focused on those with lived experience. I think we all recognize that until we walk a mile in another person's shoes, we really don't know the challenges that they face along the way. Those with lived experiences have a unique perspective one that the consultants went to great lengths to ensure was included in the engagement process because if we don't know our consumer, then the delivery of the service won't meet their needs, whether that is the delivery of programs for seniors, youth, or support for those suffering from mental health and addictions issues. These engagement sessions did not take place as originally planned as the work planned to this project predated the pandemic workarounds were then implemented. Regardless, because of the consistent messaging we heard throughout the engagement processes, we are confident that the priorities identified will have the most positive impact in our communities. And now Chief Skinner will share the consultation findings with you. Thanks, Kim. So what did we hear from those consultations? We heard that for all residents to feel safe and physically, mentally, and spiritually healthy, their basic needs must be met. We heard that safety and well being means residents feel they belong, they are welcome, they are respected, and they are connected to others in their community. We heard there are vulnerable individuals and families in our communities who need additional help to enhance the quality of their lives. We heard there are many excellent social, health, and recreational leisure programs and services available to residents in and across the six partner municipalities. And we heard that not all residents are able to access the services and supports they need when they need them, where they need them. The survey responses for all of the communities indicated that the access to healthcare services was the number one priority to support community safety and well being. Stratford and St. Mary's both had adequate and affordable housing as their number two priority, while North, West, and South Perth, res Perth respondents identified other community securities and safety as their number two priority. This catch-all includes police visibility and enforcement strategies as a deterrent to criminal activity and traffic-related issues. Perth East responded, uh, respondents identified recreational activity opportunities as their number two priority. This plan uh, takes into account the similarities and differences in these identified priorities, enabling each municipality to put programs and services in place to meet their specific community's needs. The facilitated focus groups and one-on-one -on -one discussions identified similar priorities in more detail, as you'll see in slide 17. So slide 18, as we said earlier in the presentation, the intent of the community safety and well-being plan is to leverage the great work uh, all, already being done and support the implementation of programs on a go forward that addresses any gaps in service delivery. We identified some of the foregoing or the ongoing committees and initiatives that are in place supporting some of the priorities identified, which this plan will rely on to inform our future coordinated efforts. 
I will now uh, turn it over to Inspector Cinco to review the four priority areas of the plan. All right, so on slide 21, all of the research, consultations with stakeholders and engagement with the public culminated in the identification of four priority areas that will focus the work and contributions to the community safety and well-being. Priority area one, we've titled systems planning and integration, with the first goal being to improve knowledge and of and access to programs, services, supports, and resources. What became apparent during the engagement sessions was that people either didn't know that the programs were available in their community or how to access the programs that did exist. More creative and persistent communication initiatives will better position people to access and utilize the supports already in place and better identify any gaps. Goal number two under this priority is focused on police visibility and more subject matter experts on patrol or readily accessible to police as a, deter as a deterrent to negative behavior in our communities. And of course, major event planning and preparedness was identified in response to the efforts being put in place to keep our communities safe and healthy during this global pandemic. So slide number 22, priority number two is adequate, affordable and attainable housing. The goal of this area is to increase the availability and accessibility of affordable, safe and suitable housing by supporting the strategic objectives of our area's updated housing and homelessness plan. Slide number 23, priority area number three is affordable and accessible health social and recreation services. Goals including, include improving the availability and accessibility to healthcare services by supporting healthcare partners in their work and improving knowledge and awareness of crisis response triage options. A third goal under this priority area is to increase the availability and affordable transportation options and support the efforts that are currently underway. Priority area number four is social inclusion. Goals include increasing the application of equity, diversity, and inclusion practices across all partner agencies and promote understanding of the diverse groups and populations that live in our communities. And slide 26, the final goal under this area is to enhance our resident sense of community belonging by creating and maintaining safe and welcoming public spaces and increasing access to community events and activities for everyone. And now I'll pass it back to Kim to share on what happens next. So after council's adaptation of this plan, adoption of this plan as the community safety and well-being plan, the next step will be the implementation process. One of the things that I have consistently heard when dealing with members of the public is that we may be aware of the issues plaguing our communities, but nobody is doing anything about it. And some with lived experience thinks that nobody cares about them. Nothing could be further from reality, but it speaks to that we need more communication. A big part of the initial phase of the implementation will be a comprehensive communication strategy to inform rollout of the plan to the public, provide ongoing updates of the enhancements being made to our collective service delivery efforts to demonstrate to the public that this plan is not sitting on a shelf. The public has high expectations of its politicians and municipal employees. In order to maintain trust and support from our constituents, we need to do a better job of letting the public know what we are doing, what we hope to achieve, and how they can be part of the solution. Slide 28 speaks to the strategic engagement approach to the community safety and well-being plan. It recognizes the strengths that already exist within, the, within and across municipalities and organizations. It enhances effectiveness by creating more strategically aligned and formalized alliances, and it helps to improve integration, enhance capacity, 
reduce duplication, and promote coordination and collaboration. The community safety and well-being plans are meant to bring those with individual mandates together as partners to find a new creative way to deal with local issues and explore our options. The concept of team facilitates the potential for the whole to be greater than the sum of its parts. Coordination of resources, sharing of information, integrated approaches to problem solving, less duplication and greater efficiencies are all benefits of collaboration and the community as a whole benefits when organizational leaders can model the way by thinking beyond their own mandates and how decisions they make affect the environment of others. The following is the governance structure. The governance structure provides guidance, direction, and oversight of the plan that has been, and this has been uh, subject to significant discussions. For the implementation of the plan, the decision has made to de delineate the executive leadership as those who are legislatively bound to have the plan in place and have participated as a funding partner to create the plans, funding partners to create the plans, thus having broad responsibility for their individual community safety and well being. So each of the partner municipalities will have a seat at the executive leadership table with the police and social services participating as co chairs and resources to the executive leadership team. The voting rights are reserved for the representatives of the municipalities. The key stakeholder committee consists of the leaderships of those existing agencies and organizations whose mandates are aligned with the goals and objectives of the plans. The action group is where the heavy lifting will take place and there's flexibility to align the action groups on ba based on geography, priority, or an already existing committee. The plan will leverage, leverage existing committees and the first implementation step for the plan will be to conduct an inventory of all existing committees in Perth County, review their mandates and the programs that they have in place currently. We will then begin the process of bringing the leadership from like-minded action groups together for greater clarity on what exists currently and how those committees are interacting currently. The responsibility of the Partnership Council will be to implement the plan, identify linkages between the programs and services, and to enhance coordination among and between municipalities and service providers. It will be the responsibility of the Partnership Council to determine how frequently to report back to the individual municipal councils, determine the annual budget allocations that will go before each council, and to provide operational support to the plan. The Partnership Council will have final decision making over the structure of the plan. We anticipate there will be a report back expectation from the Ministry of Solicitor General, although this has not been clarified yet, and the Partnership Council will have that, that responsibility as well. The action groups will be the conduit of the plan to the community. These groups will be the backbone of the plan and will provide the means to where the creativity, innovation, and problem solving acumen will have the most impact on our community. Communication, cooperation, collaboration, and commitment will be key components to the success of this plan. Chief Skinner will now conclude the presentation. Once all of the partner councils have reviewed, approved, and adopted the plan through resolution, then the implementation plan uh, can be put into action. The last of the presentations to individual councils happens on May 25th, and assuming all adopt the plan, then the next steps will be to one, convene the partnership council and formalize the implementation plan and terms of reference. Two, identify action groups and inventory their individual mandates, composition, priorities, goals, objectives, and accomplishments to date. Three, develop performance measurement and evaluation tools for the purposes of focus and report back and four, and most importantly, establish a communication strategy to publicly introduce the plan. Just a couple of final thoughts before opening it up to questions. I want to commend Tracy and her team from DPRA for being able to complete this plan during the pandemic. I don't know if any of us truly appreciate the challenges that our team faced in engaging the public and key stakeholders during a period of community lockdowns 
video conferencing and competing priorities for municipal and corporate leaders. Thank you, Tracy, for all of your assistance and professionalism. Also, I want to congratulate your municipality on the commitment of your staff throughout this process. We recognize that each municipality has its individual needs and in no way, shape or form is this plan an attempt to impose its priorities on your community. This is not a zero sum game. This is about bringing people and committees together and to understand the diverse issues, broaden the impact of successes already achieved and leverage the knowledge and commitment of existing committees. And in so doing, provide you as elected representatives with the information you need to satisfy yourselves and your constituents that progress is being made to make your community safer and enhance your community members' quality of life. And with that, that is the conclusion of our presentation and we would be happy to take any questions. Thank you very much team. Um, appreciated the excellent information that was provided tonight and certainly answered some of my questions preemptively, so that's a good thing. Um, at this time, councillors, uh, you're welcome to uh, ask some questions. Uh, please queue up in the usual fashion in the web chat and uh, we'll call on you in the appropriate order. At least we think we will. Sometimes we mess that up. We work on it. Okay. I believe Councillor Behrens was involved in the process. Uh, Councillor Behrens, I understand that you had written a little note in the chat box expressing appreciation, but perhaps you'd like to offer a few comments of reflection and end that appreciation on behalf of this council. Um, thank you for you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, just thanks to Earth Council for letting me on experience and nice to see so many agencies working together for the betterment of our community and I know that Kim and Greg and Dave and Tracy and Janine were only a few of the many members that we had um, I know that all of you have read the documentation and the priorities and as you can see we're all working together as what we used to call geographic Perth County um, and I think this is the best approach for all of our communities. Um, with the four, four priority areas, I know that you can see that there's an abundance of opportunities. Some of uh, programs that we already have in place, and I would um, say just recently, uh, Ms. Gangle talked about the Lonely No More. Um, that fits in nicely with this particular initiative. And I imagine that there will be a number of ideas coming forward. And I just want to say thanks to everyone. Um, it was a pleasure to work with you. Thanks, Pastor Behrens. Uh, do we have anyone queued up with questions or comments at this point, Clerk Fairfax? Okay. So it doesn't appear that we have uh, any uh, questions or comments at this point. Um, I do have a resolution council for a consideration that reads as follows. Uh, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth adopts the Community Safety and Wellbeing Plan 2021 to 2024, along with the accompanying implementation plan, and that the adopted plan be forwarded to the Ministry of the Solicitor General as required by the Police Services Act 1990, and further, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth allocates additional resources to implement and sustain the Community Safety and Wellbeing Plan and be referred to the 2022 budget process. Uh, can I call on Councillor Seiler to be our mover for that one? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Andreessen, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I second that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on this motion? Councillor Rothwell, please. Thanks, uh, Mayor Todd, and thanks very much for the presentation. I did have a question. I didn't get my uh, uh, response up uh, quick enough. Uh, in terms of the uh, uh, submission to the province, uh, is the expectation of the uh, uh, group that uh, worked on this uh, project for our uh, citizens here, is the hope that uh, that would be the basis upon which uh, some specific funding, as the mayor mentioned, uh, for implementation, and in particular, 
both uh, the uh, mental health uh, aspect and uh, probably the most costly of all, which is the affordable housing, affordable and attainable housing. Is there specific uh, programs that uh, we're hoping the province is going to assist our municipalities with to uh, address uh, these two of, well, all four of them are important, but those two issues in, in particular? Ms. McElroy, did you want to coordinate the, the response? Uh, for you, Mayor Kassenberg, I'll let you, uh, Chief Skinner speak to the ministry and then if I need to follow up with affordable housing and mental health, I will. Thank you, Chief Skinner. Yes, uh, Mayor, through you, uh, we, uh, at, at present, there is no um, uh, structure in place for funding uh, from the province for the community safety and well-being plans, but I do anticipate that there is such investment at the provincial level to have these plans in place and have them be successful that I anticipate there will be some uh, funding specific to the plans coming forward in the near future. Mm -hmm. And of course, with uh, all of the municipalities, all of the partner municipalities being able to be joint applicants on those grants, I think they uh, 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 have a significant uh, level of uh, um, uh, success attached to them because it is a cooperative uh, assessment and, and uh, proposal. So I see that in the future where there will be some funding attached to that, but at present, uh, the funding is at the local level. I'll turn it over to Kim to talk about the affordable housing piece. Through you, Mayor Kassenberg, uh, as, as uh, discussed at length, uh, the affordable attainable housing. Uh, yes, through this plan, we will be uh, highlighting the housing at Homeless and housing, housing and Homelessness Plan through our CMSM. Uh, I will tell you as well, it, it always remains on the forefront and we will leverage the resources uh, through the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing, uh, through delegations, um, as well as a strong link to the Ministry of Health because uh, the importance of supportive housing has come on our radar as well. So. Uh, we, we ensure that the partnerships uh, uh, with Ministry of Health partners and Ministry of Municipal Affairs partners, both at the municipal and the provincial levels, uh, will be part of uh, moving the objectives forward with this. Thanks, Ms. McElroy, and certainly I uh, echo that interest in having the Ministry of Health at the table. I think that is going to be critical in that matter. Um, any other questions or comments? Councillor Andreessen, next. Yes, uh, thank you, Sir. You, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, kudos to everyone that's been working on this um, project. I think it's so significant, and we. I feel so fortunate that our um, municipality is partnering with the rest of the municipalities, and I think it'll be a great collaboration. Um, my question is just about timing. Um, I noticed that the um, Community Safety and Wellbeing Partnership Council will be underway. And I'm assuming you're waiting for approval from all the municipalities. Assuming that all these municipalities approve it and we move forward, um, were you thinking that the council would begin in the fall, um, in the summer? Just curious what that timeline would be for the, the start of this. Thank you. Through you, uh, Mayor, uh, what we are uh, anticipating is that once all the partnership councils have approved the plan and it's been forwarded uh, to the, uh, the Ministry of Solicitor General, uh, we would be uh, attempting to uh, bring the uh, le executive leadership team together as quickly as possible. Uh, there are some discussions that need to be uh, formalized and um, uh, uh, agreements need to be made before we can move forward more broadly. But we want to bring this, uh, we want to start the discussions and the uh, formations of the, of the groups as quickly as possible so that we can get this uh, going as quickly as possible. There has been some uh, significant anticipation in the public. Uh, of course, when you engage the public uh, to talk about uh, um, uh, programs and services that impact on them, they're interested to see things start moving. So uh, we want to 
put things in place and in, in uh, progress as quickly after all the municipalities have uh, passed their resolutions. So we can demonstrate through the communication strategy and bringing all the, the major teams together that we are uh, commencing this and that it is important to us and the communities. Thank you. Um, I, it's not exactly a question, more a comment. Um, I look forward to the um, approach to metrics and, um, and evaluation approaches. Um, I think, as I read it, I, to me, that was the piece that was kind of missing. Um, was a sense of, of how what our baseline looks like and how you're going to measure against some of the objectives that you've outlined. And so, um, it, it does look like your plan includes uh, developing that in the very near future. I look forward to learning more about that uh, in due course. Okay, um, we're not seeing anyone else uh, listed to um, ask questions or discuss or debate. Uh, it has been duly moved and seconded that we adopt this report and uh, send it along its way to uh, the appropriate provincial ministry, I think Solicitor General. Um, so why don't we have that vote? Councillor Rothwell, I'm in support. Uh, my e-scribe's not working. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Rothwell. I also support the motion. My e-scribe is not working. Thank you. Thanks. I think that brings us to everyone. That's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, special thanks. Uh, I mean, you've heard it on our behalf from Councillor Barons, but special thanks to the team that presented tonight. And, and we certainly acknowledge there was a much larger team uh, behind all of this. We appreciate the professionalism and excellence and the passionate commitment for our communities. Um, well done and, um, and Godspeed. Keep going, keep going. Um, thanks for uh, joining our meeting tonight. We know that you have another meeting to go to. Second verse, same as the first for you folks. So um, we wish you a good evening. Thank you for Thank your you. time. Thank you very much, good night. Thank you. Hey, okay, um, council, uh, we're gonna roll back as uh, uh, mayor missed something. Uh, we're gonna roll back to the drain and um, I have a couple of resolutions that we need to get through for that drain. Uh, so let's pick those up off the table if you'll forgive my uh, my oversight uh, my goal was to get them on and out for their next meeting so um, sort of oversight um, so i have three resolutions it appears with regards to the drain that we discussed in uh, item 4.1 the first is uh, the resolution reads as follows the council of the municipality of north perth will accept the holman municipal drain report prepared by rj burnside and associates limited can I call on Councillor Anstett to be our mover for this? Uh, we struggle a little bit to hear you there, Councillor Anstett. Yes, I would move that motion. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Barons, will you be our seconder for that one? Yes, I will second that motion. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, any discussion or debate on that, Council? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Looks like we got everyone back in too. That's good. Uh, next up is uh, Port of Revision uh, Information Resolution reads that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth will hold the Court of Revision for the Holman Municipal Drain on June 7th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. Can I call on Deputy Mayor Kellum to be our mover for that? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. And Councillor Johnston, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I would second that. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on that one? We're not seeing any, so let's have that vote. And that's carried. And now we have the bylaw, uh, that bylaw 59-2021 being a bylaw to provide for a drainage works, the Holman Municipal Drain, be introduced, read, and considered read a first and second time, and be provisionally adopted. And the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call on 
Councillor Richardson to be our mover for that one. I'll move that. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Rothwell, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I will. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate on that? Seeing none, let's have that vote. I'm in favor, Councillor Anstead. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Anstead. We're missing Councillor Duncan, so that's carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, the chair acknowledges the deputy mayor has joined the meeting. Um, Doug, did you want to make a disclosure of pecuniary interests tonight? Deputy Mayor Callum, I thought you were there. Internet is crazy. I don't know. I think they hit a line over here by uh, on uh -oh. Victoria Street. But yes, I'm sorry. It's all good. So I yes, I would like to make a declare uh, on pecuniary interest on uh, items 5.5.1, I believe, and uh, then the confirmatory bylaw on 13.1 with regards to Perth Meadows with my parents-in-law uh, being there, and then with my grandson with uh, the, uh, the the daycare. So. Other than that, okay. I think I'm good to go. Thanks, Deputy Mayor Callum. All right, we move ahead. Uh, that brings us to agenda item number five, reports from departments and key staff. For item 5.1.1, Council is presented with a report on the subject of backyard burning with an overview of our existing bylaws and plans to enhance educational efforts and plans for a more fulsome review of this bylaw in the near future. I have certainly noted an increase personally in calls to me about this matter. So I'm looking forward to uh, hearing this report and I'm going to call on CAO Chris Snell to speak to it. Mr. Snell, welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. So as, um, as the mayor mentioned, I'm just gonna make a couple brief comments. We have certainly seen an increase um, during COVID, um, both of people having backyard fires and, and, and since also uh, a rise in the number of complaints received um, regarding backyard fires. So as of this point, as mentioned, the current bylaw is under review by fire department staff. We will be in the meantime circulating information on our current bylaw to all the North Perth residents focusing on our urban areas. And I think the most important part of tonight's message is complaints must be registered when the incident is occurring. Um, Residents can do that by either contacting the fire department during business hours or the OPP at the 888-310-1122 number for um, non-office hours. And the reason why it's important is, is it's, it's very hard for our bylaw enforcement, whether that be fire or, fire or the OPP, to investigate a burn incident after the fact. Um, so it's very important that if you're talking to um, residents, if they if they have a, a bylaw complaint, they should be calling it in while the incident is occurring. And with that, I'll answer any questions council may have. Thanks, CEO Snell. Uh, council, um, any uh, first uh, comments or questions on this one? Mr. Fairfield, do we have a list growing at this point? Okay, we're not seeing anything on the list, but uh, we'll put the resolution forward on the floor and see where that goes. Um, but the Council of the Municipality of North Perth received the report entitled Backyard Burning Education and Bylaw Review for Information. Uh, Councillor Seiler, will you serve as our mover for that one? Yes, I will second. I will move that. Thank you. Thanks. And Councillor Andreessen, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I'll second that motion. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Now, anyone have questions, comments, discussion, or debate on that one? We're not seeing anything. So, uh, duly moved and seconded. Let's have that. Oh, Councillor Richardson, please. Just under the wire. Just, uh, just in the nick of time, so thank you. Through you, Mayor Caseberg. Just wondering about this. I do know in previous bylaws it was mentioned about that the only burning permit would be permitted um, if food was involved, like if actually cooking food. Unless I'm missing something in this report, it doesn't make mention of that. Has that been omitted? CAO, 
So thank you, Mayor. So that is that is still the case, and that um, is actually a requirement of, of the fire code, is my understanding. Um, so if it's not clearly delineated in the in the brochure, um, we can make sure that it that it, it's enhanced. Um, but I will um, I'll I'll check back with the fire department on that. But that still is a requirement of of I believe the fire code and hence our bylaw. Supplemental, thank you. I just didn't notice if anything, there's nothing even in there. I would think that it would fall under additional requirements for approved contained fires. If it's a contained fire that if it has to be, you have to be using it for a procedure of cooking. Yeah, great catch, um, Councillor, and we'll make sure that's um, certainly highlighted, if not, not in the brochure at this time. Thanks, Matt. That's useful. Um, any other uh, discussion, debate, comments? Um, CAO Snell, when, when do you think this brochure is going to get out? So we can certainly um, push it out to social media and the website um, fairly quickly. Um, we are having discussions with um, um, how we distribute it to uh, the bulk of our um, bulk of our residents um, looking at either um, distribution through the mail or through um, the flyer program. Okay, thank you. So Council, I, if, if you spot other things in this uh, brochure that you think uh, need redress, I think there's a little window of time at least uh, for you. Any other discussion or debate on this one? Okay, um, well, it's been duly moved and seconded, I think, right? So let's have that vote. And that's carried, thank you very much. That bumps us along to item 5.2, which are reports from the clerk's department for item 5.2.1. Council is invited to um, address the uh, matter of a uh, fireworks display uh, planned for uh, Listowel or proposed for Listowel on uh, July 16th, 2021 at the fairgrounds uh, at, to be executed by the Listowel Agricultural Society. Um, uh, Clerk Berfelds, did you want to comment on this one? She's, she's saying that that's good enough, but I've summarized it well enough. Okay, so um, any, any questions from council or first comments on this matter before we consider the resolution? We're not seeing anything, so we have a resolution. It reads uh, as follows, that the council of the municipality of North Perth approved the request from the Listowel Agricultural Society to hold a fireworks display at the Listowel Fairgrounds on July 16th, 2021 from 9 p.m. until 11 p.m. on the condition that a permit is received from the North Perth Fire Department. Councillor Anstead, will you serve as our mover for that one? Yes, I would move that motion, thank you. Thank you, and Councillor Behrens, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I will second that, thank you. Thanks. Any discussion or debate besides yay? We're not seeing anything, so let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you very much. Let's move down the plate here. Item 5.3, reports from the Programs Department. For item 5.3.1, staff has brought forward a report that updates on the Lonely No More program that is currently being implemented in North Perth. I'll call on North Perth Manager of Programs, Amy Gangle, to provide us with more information. Welcome, Ms. Gangle. Thank you, Mayor and members of Council. I'd like to begin by thanking our Program Coordinator, Kelly Broughton, for her hard work and efforts for this project as well as thank Sarah and Sheila from the Gateway Center of Excellence in Rural Health for helping us in implementing this pilot program in North Perth. Without them, we wouldn't have all of the wonderful data that you see before you. So overall, the Lonely No More program has been very well received from the North Perth community. I've shared, we've shared a lot of information with you and I will uh, just highlight some of the points for, for Council's attention. 
So just to reflect, the Lonely No More program provides rural seniors the ability to participate in a free phone-based peer support program that addresses their need for socialization in a safe and protected space. This program also provides sen rural seniors a chance to take leadership positions within their community. At the December 2020 Council meeting, Council of North, Municipal North Perth, recommended staff resources be used to participate and implement the Lonely No More six month pilot program. Staff were also uh, here today to provide that follow up for Council's um, consideration. So in January 2021, the municipal staff began collaborating with the Gateway Center of Excellence in Rural Health to implement the Lonely No More pilot program in North Perth. In your attachments, we've highlighted a timeline to just show a picture of items and actions that we've proceeded, but I've also listed them in our reports. Items such as our meetings with the Gateway, we had several meetings together and great collaboration, great brainstorming, great ways for us to be able to get the most out of our program for the six month period. We created and promoted marketing materials for the program for our community. We recruited volunteers. Uh, we provided outreach opportunities and additional educational offerings. Um, we had uh, many members participate in the Connectedness Coaching Program, which is a foundation of the Learning of No More Training platform. We had volunteers participate in hands-on practical application center sessions. Uh, they participated in the Lonely More Specific Training webinar. We started recruiting our participants and were able to actually implement some elder circles um, as we speak. We built resources for our volunteer community members to refer to, and we're continuing to do them. They are ongoing. And uh, finally, our report to council. Marketing and promotion items, several different platforms were chosen in different areas and ways, just being conscious of our audience and what type of participants we wanted to get and um, finding and seeking ways to get the word out to, for people to participate with that program. Certainly during the current pandemic situations, we did have some limitations, but we were still pleased with the engagement that we did receive. As far as our participant numbers, we have two active North Perth volunteers. Uh, one is currently serving at uh, their week four of the Elder Circle, and the other is now in week two of their Elder Circle. We're currently in the process of walking through train material with three new North Perth residents and then gauging their interests on becoming uh, further volunteers for us. We were fortunate over this pilot period to also receive some help from some additional volunteers from other counties, which really helped our coaches learn a little bit more, get some of our participants started that needed that socialization right away and to help the transition into our North Perth uh, elder circles. We had, so we had four additional uh, volunteers from outside uh, uh, counties. Um, we also have three potential volunteers, two within um, North Perth and one from Bruce County willing to serve our North Perth residents. We had 10 Perth participants, nine of them were from North Perth and one of them from St. Mary's. All in all, we had four elder circles across both counties. So to keep the volunteers and participants engaged, some of the registrants participated in the Elder Circles early on this year um, so that they could get some engagement and some experience in that. As this is a telephone format, distance was not a big barrier for this program. So even if somebody is in Perth County, to engage with someone from Huron County is not a bad thing. They still are rural communities, they're still seniors, still participants, and have a lot to share. And, and they were able to get quite a bit of benefit from it. In addition to our participants, what we learned is we discovered that um, our uh, volunteers and those who participated in the Connectedness Coaching, the Learning No More program, they found benefits within themselves from that program. So even if they just did the Connectedness Coaching program and went away, they still came away with quite a bit of information and, and resources that they can use for their family, for their personal use, or with their friends. So I gave some highlights, some examples in here. So one of them is during the coping strategy exchange session, community members from different counties came together virtually and shared ways that they could build resiliency together. And it was pretty amazing just to hear 
all of the shared ideas and coming together and then just hearing how everybody felt when that was done of how that made them feel better and feel them more confident that they're able to cope and they can they see a light at the end of the tunnel for that. We also, through five connectedness coaching webinars, we're able to develop uh, an asset map of gifts that individuals and associations and local institutions had. Essentially, it's, a, it's collecting a database of assets of what things we can contribute, what are skills and abilities that are available within ourselves and in our community that can help us through any times that we're, we're, uh, we're, that's coming uh, approaching to us. In the report, you see the one that is from the five connectedness coachings. And in the attachments, you'll see one that is a little different. It's the one that we've started for North Perth. And um, so we've already started that with the North Perth and we feel that it's gonna keep growing from that. So we thought we'd share both of, just to let you know how those could look. Regarding partnerships, discussions with above organizations revealed that they recognize the value of the Learning Normal program. However, they didn't have the capacity to oversee the program themselves. This was our initial approach, our concepts for us to provide supports for organizations. As everybody can understand, everybody has limited capacities and abilities um, to be able to add on additional responsibilities with everything that they're handling at this point. They supported the program, they just didn't have the capacity to take it on themselves. So the intention of the Lonely No More pilot program was to collaborate with and promote other services in North Perth available for the older adult population. Community groups were interested in this partnership, seeking ways for this pro program can complement what services are currently happening and filling service gaps identified. And we've started to touch that surface as we're getting more involved with the elder circles, discovering what needs there are and being able to share those resources with individuals, we're starting to see that come to light. Uh, we've received some feedback, so some items, so we had some requests for one-on-one -on -one sessions. So we found this is a great opportunity for us to collaborate with the other community organizations in, our, in, our, in North Perth. We heard a lot that there's value in the North, in the Lonely No More program, both from the volunteers as well as the participants. Our key advertisement through the community connection was the most effective tool, but we still try everything else, the social media and all the other pieces, because we still think that those are avenues that uh, might, might grasp individuals' interests. The program not only provides resource for participants, but the volunteers and the community members as well. I've also attached some testimonials uh, to the, the package. I'm just gonna highlight some of them. Reasons for that people um, engaged in the connectedness coaching, the initial program, uh, sorry, the initial level of the entry level coaching program. Uh, so comments, my goals are just to reach out to people in the community who need support and connections, to support the needs of elderly in the community and to give back to our community. So great, great feedback. This is, this is meeting a need for some of those individuals. From our participants to testimonials, we've heard, it's nice when others bring up new stuff that I didn't know about. And Councillor Barnes commented, and I had actually written notes there that this is a great program that would support the community safety and well-being plan. Another comment, open the door to think about other people in different areas and local things to check out. I cling to the thought that I have value and I can offer things. It was something to look forward to. My facilitator kept reassuring me things can get better. It was very uplifting when chatting with my facilitator. So we received several positive comments with regards to this program. So in conclusion, the Lonely No More program supports the program department's charter of fostering a sense of community through quality programs. Because of the North Perth Elder Circle did not begin until May, it's a little too early to tell the full impact of the Lonely No More program, but preliminary findings find that the impact indicate it's a benefic benefit to our program. Information collected during the pilot program reveals there's an opportunity for the municipality to be the champion of this program for North Perth and possibly Perth County residents. With limited capacity ourselves, it's recommended we work together with with Gateway's Lonely No More program providers to share our resources in order to offer the programming for Huron and Perth counties. Our primary focus is North Perth, 
However, if we're, uh, interest from other Kirk County residents would be welcomed. An example is our, is our current participants. We have nine from North Perth and we have one from uh, St. Mary's. This program we also see as an opportunity to discover senior interests and it will help direct our focus to offer additional community programmings to meet their needs. Regarding financial implications, so we were part of this, this provincial funding, approximately $30,000. We worked with Gateway, uh, partnered with us for to expand the program into North Perth and to implement the six month pilot program. The original plan was for the municipality to be responsible for the operating costs to sustain the program independently. However, during the pilot program, it was determined we don't have sufficient capacity in order to do this successfully. We calculated, we were working together and breaking down all of the responsive roles and responsibilities. It calculated to approximately 33 minutes per participant per week. Therefore, the, the recommended entering, the staff recommend entering into a partnership agreement with Gately Gateways Lonely No More program providers for continuation of the program for one year. This would run from June 1st to May 31st, 2022 with the option for continued service. The reason that we have it going from June to June is because that is the season of the program. Typically, the summer period is not a lot of participations, so the program ceases in, in slows down in June and it starts back up in the fall. This year is different. Um, we've recognized the need and the numbers and the demand is there. So we would run this program the entire time. I've broken down the roles and responsibilities and identified that as well as the cost breakdown with that. So the costs that we have is to for this year is $22,850. Half of that would be paid in June of this year and the other half would be paid in January of 2022. Responsibilities would include for Gateway Center of Excellence in Rural Health. They would train our volunteers on the teleconference platform. They would facilitate two outreach training events. That would mean two connectedness coaching programs and two lonely no more specific programs. They would create and distribute the welcome packages to volunteers and participants. They would access the template. It would give us access to the templates to use for recruiting the lonely no more individuals and using that name. It would also provide coaching supports for practical sessions when those red flags come up. They would provide weekly collection and review the activity logs and address any concerns and issues that arise. It would update our volunteers on any policy changes and resources addressing any inquiries, concerns or issues. It would ensure consent and confidentiality agreements are created and maintained. Provide mentorship to the volunteer community members create elder circles and match volunteers based on their skill level and personality. They would liaise with the Gateway's health coach and submit one-on-one -on -one requests for mentorship as it's needed. They would capture the feedback, inquire about the program participant sport, and this would be information that we would bring back within the year. And we would have our ongoing meetings. Referring to the parks and recreation business plan, staff hours, so we have approximately 5,800 in our staff time would be allocated from our community program services and the program would fall under the strategic project 4.4.2 to promote and ensure community programs are relevant to residents with differing needs. To continue the program in our community, North Perth would need to allocate $22,850 to Gateway Center of Excellence in Rural Health for continued implementation. As this program is offered free to participants, no revenue will be generated through registration fees. Staff have not been successful in finding alternate funding to cover the costs. However, we will continue to monitor opportunities as they rise. Funds would come out of the community program budget. There is the alternate option is to discontinue the program effective May 31st, 2021. Kelly and myself are here to answer any questions council may have. Thanks, Ms. Gable. Uh, Councillors, any questions or first comments? Councillor Andreessen. Hi, thank you, uh, Amy. I really appreciated um, 
the report you produced, it, it highlighted some great impacts of this program. Uh, through you, Mayor, Mayor Kaysenberg, I have a question around, um, you know, the, the report, it's, it's initial because we've just, you know, have just started this off. Um, is there a potential for growing this program to reach a wider audience for our community? And if so, would the, would the cost rise or would the cost be the same if we were potentially able to um, have it a little bit more far reaching for more residents? Thank you. Thank you, through you, Mayor. If, um, if I had a crystal ball, I'd absolutely love to be able to give the exact answers there. However, I will let you know that we have been having those conversations with Gateway um, of, and for us to continue to learn about this program and how those flexibilities can allow us to possibly expand into other individuals. Um, noting that this Lonely No More program are for rural residences. So yes, we are catering it to our older populations, but there are, if you're in a rural community, this program can fit in there as well. So I think there'll be some evolutions of that. The increased cost certainly for the number of elder circles, if we're asking for more elder circles, there may be additional costs to that. What we've been speaking with Gateway is that with us paying for half of it at this point, then we can reevaluate at the end. There's some costs that we may not use during this time, and those costs may be reflective and, and have some flexibility for uh, in January. Perhaps we could have those discussions of adding an additional circle or expanding to a different group at that point. Um, certainly, we, we continue to have those ongoing uh, discussions. We would be in agreement with the Gateway on uh, what we've listed here, but if Council wants us to come back to ask for something more, we can certainly do that. Councillor Seiler's next. Thank you, Mayor Todd. I guess, uh, Amy, my question's related to uh, <coughs> Councillor Andreessen's. I um, was wondering if we could open this up like to uh, a, res a Riverside residents, uh, maybe our North uh, Earth Meadows. Um, and whenever we ever do get our seniors programs going again, that they have had every Thursday, if, if we could uh, uh, get involved with with it or, or whatnot. So that there's a big, good area there that I know in the Riverside there there's different uh, seniors living there and whatnot and that's uh, be nice to be able to reach out to all these people thank you certainly through you mayor yes we've actually been reaching out with them and we keep ongoing communications with them uh, with the North Perth senior coordinator they have shared a lot of our information with their members they've also showed, shared it on their social media platform and they've been making announcements and sharing emails where they possibly can. And we have been working with the Riverview. They've actually assisted with sharing flyers and, um, and helping, you know, offering to do some fundraising for us to, to encourage these programs. So those are some, some avenues to be able to look at. Um, but we have any senior organization that we have on our list and have it, we have been reaching out. We've been communicating with them all the time. Thank you. Okay, we're not seeing anyone else on the list, so uh, let's uh, consider a resolution that's been put before us here. It reads as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth enter into a partnership agreement with the Gateway Centre of Excellence of Rural Health's Lonely No More program providers for them to provide ongoing support and services of the Lonely No More program from June 1st, 2021 to May 31st, 2022, and the cost of 22,850 plus HST. Deputy Mayor Kellum, would you serve as a mover of that one? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Thanks. Councillor Johnston, would you be our seconder? Yes, I would second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? We're not seeing any, so let's have that vote. My vote didn't come up, uh, Councillor Rothwell, in favor. Thank you, and that is carried. Thank you very much. 
All right, thank you, Ms. Gangle. Carry on with the good work that you're doing in our community. Next up, uh, we're to uh, item 5.4, reports from facilities department. We don't have a report tonight from our manager of facilities, but we know that he's still uh, working hard and getting deep into the job. He's getting his arms in, that's what I keep saying. Uh, next up is item 5.5, uh, reports from the treasury and finance department. Uh, as item 5.5.1, finance staff has brought forward for council review, the accounts as of this day, May 17th, 2021. I'll note that some councillors have declared a potential pecuniary interest in this item and will absent themselves from consideration and voting. Are there any questions about this report for our staff? Seeing none, uh, the resolution reads as follows, the following summary of accounts be received by council for information the total is $706,331.30. Can I call on Councillor Richardson to be our mover for this one? I will move that. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Rothwell, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I'll second the motion. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Let's have that vote. I'm in favor, uh, Councillor Rothwell. Thank you, Councillor Rothwell. And I think with that, that's everyone that's uh, uh, declared themselves in on that vote. So that's carried. Thank you. For item 5.5.2, staff is bringing forward a recommendation pertaining to a request from an organization uh, known, at least at this point, as the Village Table to support their ambitions in creating a warming center for those in our community experiencing homelessness. It's a little bit more than that. And there's a description I'm sure that uh, Ms. Hale may share with us, but I'm gonna call on Fran Hale, our Director of Finance and Treasurer to review this request uh, and it's what it means for us and uh, what we might do with it. So welcome, Ms. Hale. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg, members of council. Uh, the request is outlined very well by the Voss Camps in the, their letter that's attached to the report. And as the mayor has highlighted, um, it provides for a warming uh, place for uh, people that need to have support and during uh, any weather, I guess, but during times when um, a shelter would be um, appropriate. Um, Mr. Erb, the executive director of United Way Perth Huron has advised that uh, he would be uh, through uh, the United Way be receiving receiving any donations that the community were wanting to provide to this uh, effort. And we, as the municipality, would be acting as a donee. In other words, that we would receive the money uh, as the donation and distribute it to uh, the Voss Camps uh, for the Village Table project. And... Um, this evening, I'm uh, just putting uh, council's uh, request forward um, from staff, just asking for permission to uh, act as the qualified donee and to uh, sign it and process any transactions for this purpose. And that's the recommendation for this evening. Thanks, Ms. Hale. Uh, questions or first comments from council? Are we seeing anything? Okay, we're not seeing anything yet. So, uh, so uh, let me read the resolution into the record for our consideration uh, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth agrees to be the qualified donee for funding received from the United Way Perth Huron towards the renovation of 295 Main Street West, Listowel, for the operation of a warming center at this site by Daryl and Ann Voskamp to be known as the Village Table. And further, that the Director of Finance Treasurer be authorized to sign and process transactions related to this purpose. Can I call on Councillor Seiler to be our mover for this one? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Andreessen, would you be our seconder? Yes, I'm happy to second that. Thank you. Thanks. Any discussion or debate on this one? 
we're not seeing any, so let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you. Uh, next on the agenda, item 5.5.3, the Treasury has brought forward recommendation for a budget amendment to address a recommended change in scope in the procurement of motor vehicles for the corporation's use. Uh, Ms. Hale, you're up again. Please explain. Thank you very much. Um, I believe you did summarize it very well. This evening, we would like to add uh, an additional vehicle to our um, request for proposal, or actually it's a tender that we're circulating uh, to add a vehicle for the um, manager of um, facilities. Uh, as Mr. Newell has indicated that uh, it would be appropriate to be a, a truck and that he feels that the staff would enable them to uh, move around and um, transport staff equipment materials from site to site as needed. So it would be a benefit uh, to the whole department. And um, so we'd like to add that vehicle. And as council probably is aware, uh, right at the moment, the truck market is very stiff. And therefore, um, we would like to also increase uh, the estimate for the existing truck that we have uh, that council has already approved as part of the facilities budget. Um, certainly, we've also got a public works truck that we're including in this as well. And when the tenders come in, we will be bringing it back to council. Um, given that the market is tough, if the uh, amounts that uh, are presented to us for purchase are, are um, very steep, then I think we might, council might be reconsidering it, but uh, we'll wait until we see what the actual tenders are and bring that to council for uh, consideration and possibly redirection um, if, if they come in a lot higher than our, our estimated budgets for 2021. Uh, thanks, Ms. Hale. Uh, first uh, comments or questions? Mr. Barron's first. Um, yes, thanks, Fran, for your report. I'm just curious when I was reading it. Um, I know that our former director of recreation had a vehicle. What happened to that vehicle? It was um, put into the mix. Uh, we did have a number of staff that were using their personal vehicles or um, were having to uh, jostle around with other vehicles like the van and that sort of thing to to uh, um, get to site to site. So at this point in time, uh, it doesn't seem like we do have quite enough just to have those people um, get to where they need to go. But that particular vehicle is actually the one that was on the docket to be traded in, given its age and um, uh, I believe it's being used at the Steve Kerr as the base site for it. And um, definitely in need of replacement, um, but definitely utilized as well so that staff aren't using their own vehicles in the same way that they used to. Councillor Seiler is next. Thank you, Mayor Todd. Uh, just a question, Fran. Um, have we ever looked at the, the lease program or looked into maybe doing the lease program? Would it benefit uh, our municipality any at all and what the pro and co pros and cons are? Thank you. Uh, yes, we have looked at leasing in the past. In fact, we had a number of vehicles leased at one point in time and the cost benefit analysis uh, twisted to the other side and we started to own our own vehicles and kept, we're keeping them longer as well um, and doing a, a different kind of maintenance program with them and in, in terms of um, making sure that they're undercoated and that sort of thing. So we have been keeping our pickups uh, longer than we used to. Um, certainly that doesn't mean though that we shouldn't look at it again. 
And um, I'm sure as time goes by and uh, we'll have a fleet, someone looking more closely at our fleet management, and uh, I'm sure that they'll be looking into whether or not uh, leasing some of these vehicles might be a, a better way to go. But um, we haven't looked at it recently. Is there any way that we could uh, get a report back with some information? Uh, I know that we've had some trouble with our some of these tenderings with local uh, dealers and whatnot. Maybe we should reach out and, uh, and, and, and look at this. Maybe I know that there's different ones that have uh, two-year programs on and, and what have you. I, I've just, I, I don't know. I, I know a lot of people that do it and the, the market in the States and they seem to do, do all right. So I just think maybe we should uh, t take a look at it and and see where it, where it stands. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. We could uh, bring that back as part of the report uh, after um, it, when we receive our tender results, we could include a leasing option for council consideration at that time. If that's the case, let me just follow this sort of procedurally. Uh, if that's the case, then the, the current motion calls for an amendment to the budget, but we wouldn't really need to do that until we saw the results of the tender and, and the comparative results of the leasing um, initiative. So should we be thinking perhaps that really what we're asking you tonight to do is just to um, grab the costs for the number of vehicles required both on a purchase and leasing basis? Um, I would like to suggest this evening that the motion go forward so we're looking at possibly purchasing, but we also bring then the option for leasing uh, as an aside to it as well. Um, we really won't know the true price of, and we're not sure whether two or three would make any difference on a per unit basis or not, but I'm assuming more would be um, attractive to someone bidding. Um, so we're looking for that budget uh, amendment to move forward with tendering that. However, that doesn't mean that council can't change that once they see the numbers on the tender and look in terms of uh, some uh, leasing options. Um, I, I still would feel that the, the actual budget needs to be amended just for us to move forward with the tendering. And uh, certainly, if you'd like to add another motion, um, that we would also include a, um, a tender or a leasing option. Um, I, maybe I'm out of my league. It, it doesn't seem like it's that efficient to change the budget and then potentially we opt for something else and have to change the budget again in a week or two or four weeks time kind of thing. But. Um, we'll, we'll take your advice um, because we pay you to be the expert. Uh, any other questions or comments? Okay, so um, Councillor Seiler, you are interested in seeing comparatively what lease opportunities are for these three vehicles, is that right? Yes, I'm, I think it would, it would be nice to uh, look at that uh, and just see where it, where it stands and see if we're doing the right thing for our ratepayers. Uh, this would uh, probably answer that question. In my mind, thank you. Okay, so we haven't put the motion on the floor. Um, we can just add to the motion at this point if we wanted to, right? So Councillor Seiler is suggesting that we add a component here that inquires about uh, leasing options for these vehicles um, and that that be brought back with the results of uh, the tender. Um, any councillor significantly object to, to doing that at this point? Seeing anything, Clerk Berthold? Okay, so um, we're gonna update this resolution then, I think, uh, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth approves a 2021 project budget amendment for project number nine, fleet and equipment recreation, now facilities resulting in an increase of 50,000 from 70,000 to 120,000 as per the revised project detail sheet 
and further that uh, staff are directed to collect information about uh, leasing options for this vehicle or this fleet purchase and report those to council with the results of the tender. Let's look at clerk Nichols. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, why don't we turn, Councillor Anstett, would you serve as our mover for that? Yes, I would move that motion. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Behrens, will you be our seconder? Yes, I will second that motion, thank you. All right, um, any discussion or debate on that one? We're not seeing any, so let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you very much. Uh, next up is item 5.5.4, the Director of Finance is responding to an earlier request from Council pertaining to previously proposed increases in rental fees for Perth adult life care residents known commonly as Perth Meadows. This report confirms the hunches of Councillor Richardson and brings forward for consideration a revised operating budget for Perth Meadows. Uh, Treasurer Hale, up to you to uh, give us the overview of this. Here, please have the Thank floor. you very much, uh, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, this evening, Lois McLaughlin, uh, Chair of the Perth Meadows Adult Life Care Residents Committee is here, and she would like to go over the highlights with you um, for the revised budget uh, this evening. Thank you, welcome Ms. McLaughlin. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Kassenberg and members of council. As chair of the Perth Adult Life Care Residence Committee, I'm here to present the revised 2021 budget for Perth Meadows. The original budget presented March 15th included a 2% increase for the six rental units and the occupancy fees for the life lease units for the townhouses, townhomes, and the suites, effective June 1st, 2021. Council at that time brought forward their concerns and understanding that all residential rentals in Ontario were not to have any rent increases in 2021. Council recommended that the, the committee uh, reconsider this. Uh, so on April 7, 2021, uh, the Perth Adult Life Care Resident Committee had a meeting to discuss Council's concerns. Um, at that time, the committee was informed that the government of Ontario has passed legislation to freeze rent at 2020 levels. This means that the rents will not increase in 2021 for the vast majority of rental units covered under the Residential Tenancies Act. While the rent freeze will end on December 31st, 2021, landlords can give proper 90 days notice beforehand for a rent increase that takes effect in 2022. From this reference, it was readily determined that the six rental units in the main building would be excluded from any rent, any rent increase, rate increase for 2021. It was less clear for the life lease units in the main building and the townhomes. From all information available via auditors, previous discussions, and with the Perth Meadow solicitor and the provincial publication by the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing, which has been attached for council's review, it appeared that life leases would not fall under the rental rate freeze. However, the committee considered, can you consider council's suggestion to request a legal opinion. However, it was felt that the professional fees would cost nearly as much as the rate increase would provide with the 2% increase. As well, similar to council, the committee members were still concerned with the fairness of applying a rate increase to only life lease occupants. Lastly, with the stress of the pandemic, the committee felt that we should be mindful of council's concern and the prov prov provincial intent to provide some financial relief for Perth Meadows residents. Therefore, the committee passed a motion approving the Perth Meadows revised 2021 budget, which does not include any increases for occupancy fees or rental fees for 2021. And the Perth 2021 Perth Meadows budget is attached. And in reviewing the, there's very little changes to it takes from the original one that was submitted to you or presented to you, except for the monthly occupancy for the townhouses and the monthly occupancy for the Perth Meadows Suites. 
Um, the committee members, our committee members also had further discussion or uh, conversation and felt that we would like council to consider moving forward with a 2% occupancy slash rental fee increase to be effective January 1st, 2022. Typically the fees are increased uh, June 1st of each year. Uh, we felt that this would provide more than adequate notice for the residents uh, if we were to increase the fees as of January 1st, 2022. If council would like to consider this, an amending rates and fees bylaw would be brought back for consideration at the next meeting and the committee was requesting direction on this matter. It was also discussed and approved by the committee going forward that annual increases to the occupancy slash rental fees would be applied or implemented on January 1st of each year instead of June 1st, which would also help with the budgeting process for the calendar year. As council is aware, the Perth Meadows operation and capital projects are to be funded by the occupancy slash residents and the rates are set out to be self-funding with no profit. The committee remains watchful to ensure that the occupancy fees and rental rates ensure cost recovery. So the committee is recommending that the council of the municipality of North Perth receive and approve the 2021 Perth Adult Life Care Resident Committee budget as presented by the Perth Adult Life Care Residence Committee for the operation of the Perth Meadows development totaling $614,043 with no monthly life lease or rental rate increases for 2021. The committee is also looking for direction on increasing the fees uh, for January 1st, 2022. Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm sure Fran and I would be happy to help you. Thanks very much, Ms. McLaughlin. The council, any questions or first comments on this matter? My take is that the, the first and fundamental piece is the 2021 uh, matter, which is what we have a resolution for. Um, so I'll read that resolution for our consideration that the council of the municipality of North Perth receive and approve the 2021 Perth Adult Life Care Residence Committee budget as presented by the Perth Adult Life Care Residence Committee for the operation of the Perth Meadows development totaling $614,043, $614,043 with no monthly life lease and rental rate increases for 2021. Uh, we need, uh, we need to probably excuse Deputy Mayor Callum from this one. Uh, so, uh, Councillor Johnston, would you be our mover for this one? Yes, I would yes. move that. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Richardson, will you be our seconder? Yes, I will second yes, that. Thank you. Uh, any discussion or debate? I think the clerk has indicated someone wants to speak. Mm -hmm. Councillor Richardson, please. Thank you, through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Thanks for bringing that, this report back, and um, I'm glad that uh, the committee has reevaluated its position on this. And it would be, I guess, it would be prudent to say that obviously notice can give the standard 90-day notice come September, I would think, um, but that will provide a little bit of relief for the 2021 period during COVID and everything. Um, residents of North Perth, so I'll support this motion the way it sits. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? Um, Councillor Seiler? Thank you, Mayor Todd. Just a comment. Uh, thank you, Lois, for taking time to come and do this for us tonight. I know hopefully we can uh, have our meeting on in June that we can get together and whatnot, but uh, we're, we're facing some challenges with the Perth Meadows, with the way the prices are in, in our municipality and what have you, and the, the growth around Minas, uh, Perth Meadows, the different uh, senior living that's that's uh, going up out there and whatnot. So uh, our committee is doing the best that we can and uh, trying to uh, keep every everything on the, the, the better side. So thank you, Lois, for coming out tonight again, and hopefully we can keep going. Thank you. Okay, we're not seeing any other uh, requests for comment at, at this point. So uh, why don't we have that vote? Um, we'll move and second it. Uh, 
Right. So I think uh, that's carried. That's right. Thank you. Um, now, Council, a uh, question was put before us in that presentation, and uh, perhaps I should just seek uh, any input at this point in time uh, with regards to 2022, I believe, is the question. Um, the committee uh, that is involved has asked for any Council input, so does anyone wish to make any comment on that at this point for the benefit of our committee working on this matter? See anything for her thoughts? Okay. Councillor Richardson, please. Thank you. Through you again, I would be uh, in favor of uh, proposing the standard 2% rent increase for January 2022, which is what's uh, legally allowed to us. Okay, thank you. Any uh, Anyone else wish to make a comment on this matter for 2022? So, um, you know, uh, it, it seems reasonable to me for the committee to consider that possibility. And so uh, if uh, there are other opinions on council at this point, let's hear them. See anything for reference? Okay, so Miss um, uh, McLaughlin, I think it's just, just sort of gentle uh, suggestion from one councillor, but no one has objected to it, that you consider the possibility of a 2% increases effective January of 2022. Okay, um, thank you, Mayor Kassenberg. And uh, as I say, there will be uh, an amended rates and fee schedule uh, or bylaw be being, being brought back to you probably at the next meeting by Fran, uh, if it's okay to go ahead with that rate increase as of January 1st, 2022. We don't see any councillors strenuously objecting at this point, so uh, I think council would be happy to consider it. Thank you. Thank you so much for your service uh, on this committee. We appreciate the, the work that you've had to do here and uh, grateful that you've done it. All right, uh, and I think that brings to a wrap our reports from uh, finance. Uh, so thank you. Uh, next up then, uh, we are going to turn our attention to uh, the next three items for which we have no reports. So we have nothing from our manager of mental services, nothing from our manager of operations tonight, nothing from our fire chief. Uh, all are uh, actively engaged in the good cause, although I think maybe the fire chief is on vacation. I'm not sure, but uh, uh, it's giving me the nod. So um, anyway, uh, but all is, is going well in those departments and uh, work carries on. That brings us to item five or item six, sorry. Uh, on our agenda for item 6.1, councillors, are there any reports you would like to ask of staff or of our committees? Uh, you know the drill, request an opportunity to chat in the chat function and we'll call on you. Councillor Rothwell, please. Thanks very much, uh, Mayor Todd. And uh, I just wanna pick up on something that uh, one of the uh, presenters uh, uh, had during the uh, presentation on the community uh, uh, wellness plan. Uh, and specifically, it's uh, when we talk, uh, when we invite members of the public to uh, give us uh, their opinions and they sit on committees and we uh, have heard uh, various recommendations from the mayor's task forces and other things in terms of recommendations on uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, improve situations and whether it's on uh, uh, homelessness or housing, affordable housing, or whether it's on mental health and so on. Uh, could we get uh, staff to give us a report back in terms of the progress uh, uh, that we've made and, uh, and are making with respect to the various recommendations that came from the task uh, groups, uh, or mayor's uh, task forces, I should say, uh, as well as the uh, COVID recovery action groups that uh, had a series of recommendations just so that council, we've heard all the recommendations and we did support them. Um, but uh, we have heard back on some matters from implementation, uh, but I'd like to uh, hear from staff where we are with respect to others and if there's support from other members of the council, I think it would be uh, uh, well received. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Rothwell. Uh, so sort of a recommendation roundup from uh, a few of the activities that we've had over the course of our term of council. Um, 
I think we'll need a motion to that effect, right? We'll need to direct staff to do this. So, Councillor Rothwell, I, I assume you're um, going to serve as the mover uh, for this, which is to the effect that staff is directed to uh, bring form, forward a report that considers the recommendations of the task forces and also of the CRAGs uh, or the CRAG subcommittees and um, just with evaluation of performance against those objectives. Is that fair? Yes, I'd uh, be willing to move that, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I call on, I'm now looking to hear the, the list here. Let's uh, jump up to Councillor Andreessen. Would you serve as a seconder? Yes, I'm happy to second that. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so, um, Council, any discussion or debate? Oh, okay. Um, Councillor Barris? Uh, no, Your Worship, I don't have any comment on this particular one. Thank you. Um, so we have a motion. Anyone have discussion, comments, questions about it? Okay, um, I'm hoping Deputy Clerk Beer is keeping up with us. Um, so let's see if we can trigger a vote here. Okay, that's carried, thank you. Okay, so uh, what we think Councillor Barron's intends is another report request or comment. Uh, Councillor Barron's. Uh, yes, through you, Mayor Kaysenberg, thank you. Um, I guess it is kind of a request for a report. I know during budgeting we talked about um, the vehicles and that that we have, but with the report tonight, you know, sometimes with everything else that we must know and be up on and try to keep track of, we sometimes forget the vehicles that we have and, and the number of staff that we do provide a vehicle to. And I was just wondering, it, it doesn't have to be right now, even if it was probably at budget time, it would be nice to have a report saying what vehicles we have and who's driving them and, and that type of thing. I don't mean graders and and uh, you know, street sweepers and all of that. I mean, uh, vehicles for our people to get um, or to fulfill the position that they're in. Um, I think that's clear, but um, I'll leave it up to you. Uh, so, uh, Councillor Barons, you suggested that it's it's uh, something that could be put forward into the next budget process. If I was following what you said. Uh, so why don't we have a resolution to the effect that staff prepare a dedicated report on use of usual vehicles. I'm looking for a better term if you have one, please. Um, uh, for input into the budget 2022 process. Does that sound okay to you, Councillor Barron? Um, yes, I think it's probably easier to say the provision of vehicles um, just let me sorry call me off guard here uh, the employees that we provide the North Perth vehicles to um, to fulfill their role responsibility or something along that line I'm only talking the vehicles that we're providing to staff I don't know how to say that quickly in yeah, short. I, I got you. Yes. CAO Snell, maybe you want to weigh in and help us with this one. So the long, of sh the, the, the kind of the brief answer is that we don't necessarily designate any vehicles to any staff per se. Um, for example, the on-call water operator rotates and so does the vehicle. So I would say we probably could just break it down by department and the use that vehicle is used for. So that's simple, simplest way to present it back to council. Ah, um, Council Richardson suggests a wording and resolution here. That's helpful. Uh, let's see, an inventory of standard vehicles used for transportation of staff in their roles and responsibilities into the budget process for 2022. 
That seem okay, Councillor Barris? Yeah, she's nodding. Okay, we got it. Thank you, Matt. Um, okay, so uh, I think we have a reasonable, form reasonably formulated resolution there. Uh, Councillor Barnes, uh, will you serve then as the mover for that one? Yes, I would. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, Councillor Richardson, since you were so kind, will you serve as the seconder? I would love to. All right. We have it moved and seconded. Oh. Any discussion or debate? Okay. So hoping that Cl Deputy Clerk Beer has uh, kept up with us, uh, let's trigger that vote. Should never doubt. And that's carried. Thank you very much. Any other uh, requests for reports under item 6.1? Okay, let's move on. Uh, item 7, we've received no items of correspondence beyond that that's already been shared uh, for council disposition. That brings us to item 8 on our agenda, which allows council to consider and enact bylaws. We have two tonight to consider. Specifically, uh, as item 8.1, we have a bylaw authorizing the signing of a subdivision agreement with Dalmich Holdings for a subdivision that is progressing in Atwood. Are there any questions or concerns from councillors before we have the bylaw resolution? You seen anything? Uh... We do have Mr. Yilmaz with us. Uh, Mr. Yilmaz, I have a question, if I might. Um, if we proceed with this tonight, uh, my question is, are we locking um, into the the, the sort of plan that ha has been shown to us before, uh, in particular for Block 15, which is the stub that reaches out to Main Street in Atwood. Um, yeah, sorry, thank you for your question. Um, yeah, my understanding is that the subdivision agreement is, is uh, apl applies to um, the approved draft plan um, that was... Um, brought forward at the last public meeting for this application. Um, I, in terms of what, I think we're talking about the stub that would potentially be uh, the walkway that was adjacent to, I'm sorry, I don't have the plan in front of me at the moment. Um, I do apologize. Um, but it was the walkway adjacent to the, the block with the multi-unit. Um, yeah. Yes, that's the one, Mr. Yilmaz. That's the one we're talking about. Um, certainly, I'm, I'm, the clerk is telling me that maybe it's on a schedule here. So I'm just sort of... Uh, yeah, I think we, we have it in front of us. Here looking now. through my uh, documents. Yeah, okay, that, that's the picture. Um, that, that picture doesn't... You know, I think coming out of the last process, and maybe I just need to understand the process here, uh, Sean. Uh, coming out of the, the public meeting, there were a number of people who were disgruntled by the approach that was planned for Block 15. And um, I assume that we haven't had any um, remedy to that from the developer, no change to the plan. I'm not sure what the process would be if they were to change the plan, but maybe you can just walk me through um, what they would have to do to change up the way they were dealing with that block, if they even intended to. Um, well, if it was anything different than what this draft plan is showing here, then it would come through um, a request for a modification, um, similar to what we've done in the past for other subdivisions. Um, okay. And I, I do apologize, because I, I, I'm not fully understanding the question at this point. Um, I do recall the previous conversations about that. Um, and what we were going to do in terms of we were talking about fencing and things like that. But um, specifically with what's being presented now, um, if anything changed drastically from then, yes, we would just come back with a modification request. Okay, so at this point then, um, what we know is that there is an intent to put a multi-residential block in that stub that reaches out to Main Street. Um, we're not sure exactly of the formulation of that. Like, is that a fourplex? Is it a sixplex? Or do we not? 
Um, yeah, so we don't have anything brought forward specifically at this time. Um, that was uh, stack townhouses, if I recall. Um, and it would be up, uh, subject to site plan approval as well. Okay, so there, so th there will be another step in this process. Sorry, I'm, I'm just making sure I understand our process, wherein this council uh, could see or our delegates could see the plan for that stub. Uh, for the stub specifically, um, in terms of the block with the multi-unit, uh, yeah. yes, that would be subject to site plan approval, correct. Thank you. Just wanted to be sure. All right. Uh, so we have we have a bylaw. Uh, certainly. Uh, before we get to the reading of the bylaw resolution, then it looks like Councillor Rothwell would like to weigh in. Councillor Rothwell. Thanks, Mayor Todd. And just further uh, through to Sean, could you just confirm uh, that uh, we have already dealt with the zoning bylaw on that site? Is that correct? Yes, that is correct, Councillor Rothwell. We have done the zoning amendment on this property. Correct. So, so just uh, supplementary then, uh, as you said earlier, the only issue uh, going forward would be the site plan and uh, notice uh, would be given, but uh, there is no right of repeal or of appeal through members of the public, correct? Uh, yes, that is correct. Thank you. Sorry, um, that is correct. I'm not sure if that, if that was heard or not. I'm sorry. I, I heard. Thank you. Well, I need to take myself off mute. I'll have a resolution for our consideration. Uh, therefore, uh, that reads as follows that bylaw number 47 2021 being a bylaw to authorize the signing of a subdivision agreement with Dalmich Holdings Limited be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time and be finally passed. And said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. And I call on uh, Deputy Mayor Kellum to be our mover for that. So, to be clear from Councillor Rothwell, so no appeal is appeal. What it is, it is. I want to make that clear before I make the motion. So, Mr. Yilmaz, can you help us with this? I, I, I let's see. We might get, we might loop Councillor Rothwell back into this, uh, given that he has some knowledge. But uh, let's start with you. Yeah, sure, no problem. So, the as Councillor Rothwell had had mentioned, there was a zoning amendment that was brought forward and subsequently approved. Um, and on that block specifically, it was approved for stock townhouses. Um, that any multi-unit development is subject to site plan approval. Um, that isn't a public process. Site plan approval is, is a technical um, process, essentially making sure that everything is in order to move forward with the building permit stage and, and getting the development underway. If they choose to stray, move away from what's currently permitted in the zoning, then they would have to come back for another amendment, which would be another public process. Okay. So our current understanding then is that uh, nothing has changed in their original proposal with regards to that block in particular, um, despite the fact that there certainly were several in the in attendance at the meetings, I recall were not too impressed with the ideas of what they were going to do with block 15. Does that seem uh, like a reasonable it, synthesis? Yeah, nothing has, has, has changed that I would be aware of that we have brought forward as a, other than what we brought forward at the previous um, zoning amendment application. Okay. Mr. Rothwell, you got anything? Nothing further, but as I recall, and this goes back a while, but I mean, it was the issues of concern about uh, 
privacy and whether there was going to be a fence and uh, how the parking was going to be arranged and where the garbage was going to be, which are all site plan related issues. But again, just underscoring as uh, Planner Yilmaz has pointed out is that members of the public can come to the, that meeting but uh, and they may address uh, any concerns through the council, but there's no right of appeal. So they can be heard, but there is no appeal. Uh, I think that's the critical issue. And I think we encourage the uh, uh, developer to have conversations uh, with some of the abutting property owners to try to address their concerns uh, before they brought the site plan. That's my recollection. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, great. Deputy Mayor Kelm, does that make it any easier? Yep, I'm good, and it will, I will make that motion. Thank you, thank you for everyone that uh, corresponded here. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Johnston, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I would second that. Okay. Any discussion or debate? I, 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 uh, I will offer my own comment that the block does concern me a lot, and, and I hope that the developer will give due consideration to a site plan that is respectful of uh, the neighbors' uh, interests and the community's interests in the, with that matter, as I said on that occasion. Um, okay, anyone else have comments, discussion, debate? All right, let's have that vote. I'm in favor, Councillor Rothwell. My vote didn't come up. Thank you. Thank you. And that means it's carried. All right. Uh, I think that's it for that matter, right? That's it for that matter. Okay, so now we have another bylaw. Uh, this one is uh, related to the uh, matters that we've heard about in recent weeks uh, with regards to Emerald Green subdivision in Listowel. Uh, any questions uh, or concerns from councillors uh, before we consider a bylaw resolution which will amend the subdivision agreement? We're not seeing anything, so I have. Um, are we seeing anything? Councillor Rothwell, okay. Thanks, uh, Mayor Todd. I just want to confirm I mean, uh, North Grove Council, we made the recommendation through the County Council. I, I didn't hear whether County Council approved that or not. I presume they did, given the basis that this agreement's before us. Leonard Yilmaz. Actually, um, I, can, I can speak to that. So um, the bylaw is um, condition two of the bylaw it does say the bylaw does not come into force and effect until um, County Council approves the plan, which is actually this Thursday. So if the a plan is not approved, this bylaw will, or the amendment is not approved by County Council, this bylaw will never come into full force. Thank you. So I, just supplementary then, we're just uh, trying to uh, expedite this uh, in, in the hope that County Council is going to approve this on, on Thursday. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. The developer has reached out um, asking um, if we could um, Think a plan of it because the, the unfortunate alternative is we don't meet again until June the 7th. Um, and that's almost three weeks, and the developer is um, up against a time crunch uh, as far as um, dealing with a contractor. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, so I have a resolution for consideration that bylaw number 57-2021 being a bylaw authorizes the signing of an amending subdivision agreement with 2244278 Ontario Inc. be introduced, read and considered read a first, second and third time and be finally passed and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. And I call on Councillor Rothwell to be our mover for that. Also move, yes. And Councillor Seiler, will you be our seconder? I certainly will. Thank you. Okay. We moved and seconded any discussion or debate on this one. Let's have that vote.
Councillor Rothwell, I'm in favour again. The East Scribe and I are having an issue tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And so so am I. It's gone down again for the third time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Kellum. So with those two votes, uh, that's carried. Thank you. Uh, that brings us to agenda item number nine. Are there any councillors wishing leave to give notice of motion this evening? Okay, next up is item 10 on our agenda. For item 10.1, are there any announcements that would be a benefit to our community or that reflect well on North Perth at this time? If you'd like to speak, please so indicate in the web chat window. Are we seeing anything, Clerk Fairfalls? So two things that I've taken note of, uh, uh, colleagues. Uh, the first, of course, is the sign wars have continued. They, they've slowed a little bit, but uh, certainly the recognition has continued as well. Uh, I took note, certainly, uh, and with appreciation of Mr. Kadapis' comments in the legislature, and uh, also note that um, our community's sign war showed up on CBS Morning News on Sunday morning, uh, which is uh, an American uh, media outlet. Um, I had friends in Florida let me know about that one. So um, certainly uh, the sign wars have continued to attract some favorable attention to this community and its resilience in the recovery from COVID-19. Uh, secondly, I take note of uh, a special event uh, coming up uh, next week on Monday. Uh, Chris Kerr's in our community will be uh, throwing around a tire apparently and raising funds in the process for children's snack programs uh, through the Chris Kerr's Community Fund, which is with the Stratford Perth Community Foundation. So uh, any of those, I don't encourage you to gather. That's certainly not uh, the intent. Uh, what I do encourage you to do is uh, to consider uh, whether you can make a contribution to a Kersey's cause. Any other announcements uh, before we move on? All right, that brings us to agenda item number 11. We have no matters for consideration in a closed session meeting of council tonight. Therefore, item 12 gets skipped because there's nothing to report. Council as a mandated good practice uh, acts near the end of its meeting agenda to confirm all of its actions and business of its meeting through what is called the confirmatory bylaw. I have a draft of that here that reads as follows. That bylaw number 60-2021 being a bylaw to confirm generally previous actions of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time and be finally passed. And that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call, I have to be careful here now, can I call on Councillor Johnston to be our mover tonight for that one? I would certainly move that. Thank you very much, sir. And can I call on Councillor Richardson to be our second reader? I will happily second that. Thank you. Uh, I think it's going to be a pretty small vote out here tonight with a number of uh, abstentions from this uh, matter, but any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. Councillor Rothwell, Councilor Rothwell I'm in favor. Thank you, and I think that with that, it's carried. I think that's where we are. Uh, so that's five nothing. And uh, so that brings us to the uh, point of the night where we consider adjournment. We have completed deliberation, taken action on the business that did come before us tonight. Um, I have a motion to adjourn uh, that reads as follows. The council meeting adjourns at 9.19 p.m to meet again for general council business on Monday, June 7th, 2021 at 7 p.m. We get quite a little break there. Uh, can I call on Councillor Rothwell to be our... I so move. Uh, the work has given me the update here. I saw that in East Crap, I wasn't sure it's true. Okay, so we'll deal with this motion. There is a special council meeting on May 31st. Um, Councillor Seiler, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that one's not debatable. Um, I just before we go there, though, May 31st, special council meeting, seven o'clock, training related. 
Meeting and council discussion. Okay, so just so all of my colleagues know. All right, let's have the vote on adjournment here. Councilor Rothwell in favor. Thank you, and with that, uh, that motion is carried. Uh, Council, we are uh, thus adjourned. You heard the announcement about May 31st. We trust that you'll consider being there. Our next regular meeting is June 7th. Thanks all for a good meeting, and I wish you a great week. Good night.